I am Faith Lee from faithsbizacademy.com and I'm really excited to be a part of this Business Adventure Summit. So thank you so much, Kat, for having me. Now, before I get started, let me introduce to you, where are they? I've got some of my daughter's buddies here with me since, uh, well, we have some theme going on, right? And well, I've got this. In fact, I've got three friends with me today. They're my, they're my daughter's um, unicorn buddies. So <laughs> let me give you a quick introduction. This is Rainbow Corn. As you can see, her fur is rainbow colors, has rainbow colors. And this is, we call her... A uh, lighty corn because she lights up. Check this out. She lights up. Isn't that cool? And we have her favorite chubby corn because it's so huge and cuddly and chubby. Okay, that's it. So, <laughs> so we've got we've got these, and I wish I can kind of put one on my shoulder. I'm not sure if rainbow corn is going to stay there. Probably not, but. Um, We'll see what happens about this, okay? Otherwise, she's just going to be right here with me, okay? So those are my, or rather my daughter's unicorn pals. And now let me give you an introduction of myself. So once again, I am Faith. I'm a mom of three and I actually live in Singapore, which is probably really very far from where most of you are. I started blogging since early 2018 and I took it I took it up because I wanted it to be a creative outlet and it's a side hustle. Um, I needed to make money while taking care of my young kids. However, it took me more than two years before I finally hit the thousand dollar mark in one month. But, but that was huge. You know, when I finally did it, it was really, really huge. And uh, my main income currently comes from creating and selling PLR printables. PLR stands for private label rights, which means, which essentially means that I create templates that come with commercial use license so that my customers can use my templates, customize them, rebrand them. You know, they come in Canva templates, PowerPoint templates, so that it's so much easier for my customers to actually have digital products they, that they can sell, okay? In the last two years, I have more than 4,000 students who have taken my various design and online marketing courses. I also run group as well as one-to-one -one business coaching programs, okay? Because I also want to help aspiring entrepreneurs build an online business, which, you know, that brings them a long-term sustainable income. Okay, so that's all about me. Now, more importantly, what can I help you with today? In this particular, you know, masterclass, I'm going to teach you how to create an undated monthly digital planner that looks like this, that looks like the one that you're seeing on the screen right now. And it's going to be easy. I'm going to make it as easy as possible for you. Step by step, follow through. Okay. Now, what you're going to learn is my 10-step process to create this unicorn undated monthly planner. Okay, I'm going to break it down for you to show you how I actually put everything together. Okay, so what does it mean by digital planner if you're not aware? It basically means that the objective is for my customer to actually use the planner's on their tablets instead of printing it out. So they're actually hyperlinked tabs. Let me just move back to the previous page. Right here, you see tabs, right? And they are hyperlinked, which means if I were to import this particular PDF, the digital planner comes in a PDF format, you can import it to any of your tablet, you know, GoodNotes or any other note-taking apps. Import the PDF, you can start writing on it. And with these hyperlinked tablets, uh, sorry, hyperlinked tabs. You can also just tap on them and navigate around the digital planner. Okay, so that is what it means by digital planner with hyperlinked tabs. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Okay, so step one is going to be about finding the graphics. As you can see, this is going to be a unicorn monthly planner. And where did I get the unicorn images from? I'm going to show you. Step two, to set the background of it. Okay, set the background. What do I mean? Once again, keep on watching. Step three, I'm going to show you how to create the planner tabs. Step four, creating the index page so that we have a page with all the different links because this is going to be a monthly planner. We're going to have a monthly planner page, daily planner, and weekly planner page. And the index page helps us to navigate and you can have hyperlinks to every single date of the month. That is what the index page is for. Because if I were to have 
31 days in a month, I'm not going to have like more than 30 tabs on my planner, right? Which is why I need to create the index page with all the hyperlinks to the different parts of the planner. Now, step five, I'm going to show you how to create the monthly planner page. Step six, creating the weekly planner page. Step seven, creating daily planner page. Step eight, creating notes page, which is super simple to do. And then arranging the planner pages so that we know how our daily planner, sorry, how our digital planner is going to, you know, the sequence of the pages in the digital planner. Step nine, naming the pages. And step 10, adding the hyperlinks, and then finally exporting our digital planner, like I mentioned, in a PDF format so that our customers can start using it for their own purposes or to sell it, basically. Because if you're getting like templates from me with commercial use rights, it means you can resell these digital planners as your own to your customers for their personal use, all right? Sounds good. Now, here's what I'm going to recommend. Okay, you can choose to watch everything, the entire video in one setting, um, and then come back and do it step by step. Or I'm going to have pauses along the way so that you can kind of watch and do along. In fact, if you have time, if you have one to one and a half hours, I strongly, strongly recommend that you do that okay that means you watch this video and pause and do it at the same time because this is how you actually learn the actual skills and apply it right away which is going to help you really create a product on the spot and that will be you know the best that you can get out of this session actually creating a digital planner as you watch this masterclass okay so that is what i recommend but if you're running short of time feel free to just watch everything in one shot first and then come back to it or try it out on your own after Okay, so, well, Unicorn fell, so we're just going to let her uh, sit on my chair next to me, but this means you cannot see her on the screen, okay? Um, let's get back to Canva. Now, before we start creating the actual digital planner, we need, we need to determine the size of the canvas, right? In all honesty, you don't have to worry so much about the specific size, even just a US letter size canvas would do. Why? Because the digital planner comes in a PDF file and when you import it to a tablet, whichever tablet you use, the planner is going to automatically fit the screen size of your tablet. And as far as I'm aware, the iPad Pro would be the largest tablet that I've seen around. And even then, that is about the U.S. letter size page. So um, you, you can just definitely create your U.S. Uh, you can definitely create your digital planner based on U.S. letter size dimensions. But what I would typically do is that um, because I want there to be some space around my planner page, um, I leave an inch around the entire border. Okay, so I have the U.S. letter size page and I have one inch border around my page. Why? So that I can have space to put the spiral binders and the tabs, okay? So then in this particular case, I'm gonna create a design and I'm gonna to go to custom size. The US letter size is in 8.5 by 11 inches. And this time around, I'm gonna add one inch at the top and at the bottom and one, in on, one inch on the side. So now the width would be 10.5 inches by 13 inches, okay? And that would be the canvas size for this particular digital planner that I'm creating, okay? And here is where I'm going to name my project and just hit enter. Now remember, step one is to actually look for graphics. I typically like to look for the graphics first before I create the planner pages because it helps me determine, let's say, the color scheme, the fonts, and stuff like that. Now, question where do I find commercial use graphics, okay? There are a few places that I like to go to, one of which is creativefabrica.com. Now, when you sign up for my freebie, I will also include a link for you to actually get a $1 trial for the first month to access Creative Fabrica. It's an exclusive deal that I managed to get. I'm working with Creative Fabrica on it. So they have offered my audience uh, a monthly, just a one month trial for just a dollar and you get access, unlimited access to all the fonts, graphics, digital papers, SVG files. Okay. So Creative Fabrica is a great place to look for commercial use graphics. Okay. Now the other place that I like to look for is at publicdomainpictures.net. 
So what does it mean? Public domain pictures basically refers to photos, pictures without any copyright issues. Okay. They are public domain, which means anybody can use it. Anybody can access it and anybody can use it even for commercial use purposes as well. Okay. So just to let you have two places to take a look at once again, one creativefabrica.com. It is a retail platform where you can also find freebies like here. You can look for free graphics right here. You can subscribe. I am personally subscribed to the all access pass and I get unlimited downloads for fonts, graphics, digital papers, SVG files. Okay. Now, if you're worried about the commercial use terms and stuff like that, go to publicdomainpictures.net and this is where you can find images that you can use worry-free because they are public domain, okay? And just to clarify, Creative Fabrica allows you to use their stuff for commercial use purposes, okay? So that is fine, which is why I'm recommending Creative Fabrica as well. Okay, so come here. And this is where I found my unicorn. So I wanted a unicorn themed digital planner and I searched for unicorn and this is it. Look at that. We've got some images right here and this is where I found it. My digital paper with some lovely unicorn design and therefore I just click on free download and all I had to do was to right click on the image and save image as that's it. Okay. So this is actually the unicorn design unicorn digital paper that I have downloaded from publicdomainpictures.net and used it. And I'm going to use it in this um, unicorn digital planner that I'm teaching you how to use. Okay. So, and now why, why do you want to look for commercial use graphics outside of Canva where we have so many graphics and elements found within Canva itself? Well, the short answer is that it's kind of hard to understand canvas terms and conditions. Okay. So we've got so many elements and graphics like this one. Okay. So if you want to make sure, if you really want to make sure whether it's safe for you to use certain elements, check the info icon. Okay. So you see that this is from Ms. Joyful from Ms. Joyful. I have no idea who or where this person is from and this other unicorn. I click on the info It's also from somebody else. Okay. So these are like freelancers or designers. You don't know where or who they are specifically. And then it means that, you know, um, you're not sure whether they actually allow you to use for commercial use rights. So just to be safe. Okay. Just to be safe. I would prefer finding, um, third party sourced commercial use graphics because I know and I can read the specific commercial use terms and I know that they are safe for me to use in my projects for commercial use purposes. Okay. So that is the simplified answer to that. Okay. Um, I do have a YouTube channel where I have a particular video that goes through the Canva terms and conditions in greater detail. So if you're interested, please keep a lookout for that as well. Okay. So now we have the unicorn digital paper and I also want to have a wooden background. Okay. Why? Because I want my, um, digital planner to look as realistic as possible. Like the digital planner is resting on the table. So I wanted a wooden background. So then I just came to the public domain pictures, Donna, pick one wooden image and same thing. Just download it. Okay. So that's it. Step one. Step one, we have found the graphics from publicdomainpictures.net. And if you want to pause the video, this is the part to do so. Pause the video and go look for your graphics and we'll come back. And we are back and we are going to move towards step two. Now, step two is about setting the background. Remember our wooden background. So here we have it. We're just going to upload it right here and you can go to the ellipse menu and set image as background. There we go. And then what I want to do is once again, I want my digital planner to look somewhat realistic. Okay. A bit three dimensional. So I'm going to start by going to elements and picking 
just a normal shape and have it gray right here, maybe a darker shade of gray and resize it, okay? And I'm gonna try to get it to 8.5 by 11 inches because like I said, I actually want my uh, the planner page to be US letter size, okay? So I'm not sure if you noticed, but as you drag these corners, you will see that there's this W 8.4 and H 10.9. So that's actually the dimensions of this particular rectangle. So I just have to stretch it a little bit until I get that US letter size 8.5 by 11 as much as possible. Okay, so there we go something like this. Okay, so that is it. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. So I have this and I'm going to press Ctrl D to duplicate. So that's my second rectangle, same size, but I'm going to reduce um, the color. All right, lighten it a little bit. And then let me just zoom in a little bit more. I want to have the effect that this has like multiple pages. So it looks a bit more three dimensional. So there we go. Use the arrow keys. Can you see that there are now two rectangles kind of overlapping each other? Okay, there we go. So that's like two pages. Okay, now I also want to create a shadow effect. So for the bottom most one, the gray, I'm going to press Ctrl D again to create a shadow. And this time around, I'm going to go to black. And I'm going to go to the ellipse menu and adjust the transparency right here. Make it like, let's say 50%. It's not solid, right? 50 or 30%. And now positioning it all the way to the back. And once again, shifting it such that it looks like a shadow. All right, like here. So now I find that, do you see? If you look very carefully, there's this lighter gray, dark gray, and a trans the translucent black. Okay, but what I want to do now is right here. Okay, so we've got three layers right here. Now it's too zoomed in. Let's see. We've got three layers right here. Can you see that it looks a little bit more three-dimensional because there's like kind of depth that we have created? So here, three layers so far. One is the one that is black with translucent, adjusted the transparency to that's the shadow. We've got a darker gray, we've got a lighter gray. Ctrl D again to duplicate. And now we want the gray to be even lighter. Go to the color swatch and just move this slider up a little bit to adjust it. And once again, zooming in so that you can kind of move the pages. We want them to be closer to each other. You can use your arrow keys to do some fine adjustments like this. And then just one last one. And this time around, I'm gonna have it as white. Okay, so there we go, there we go. Okay, can you see now that there are several layers right here and it creates a three-dimensional effect. Okay, now it looks like there is depth, there is thickness, okay? So now just click select everything and I'm just going to group it so I don't shift anything around any of the layers around and have it right here. Okay. And I'm going to also look for an image that I have uploaded, which is the spiral binder. So this is actually something that I have created. Okay. I actually created these binder rings right here. I'm sorry, we do not have sufficient time to show you how to actually create these binder rings. You can purchase them on Etsy or certain shops which actually sell um, binder rings images like these. Or once again, I do have a video, YouTube video, on how to create binder rings like this within Canva. Okay, so this is actually created individually. And then I save it as a PNG with transparent background. And now I'm going to use it as part of my digital planner. Okay. So right like this, we've got um, the wooden background, the pages, we've got the spiral binder. And one last thing to add, go to elements and look for the grid. Okay, why? Because I want to click and drag my unicorn image right here so it fits nicely. Okay, just zooming in to make sure, position my grid all the way front. And there we have it. This is where my grid is going to be right here. Let me just zoom in. I really need to see the grid and the layers right like this. 
using the arrow keys to do some fine adjustment right here and zooming out a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm now going to bring in my unicorn um, digital paper. Remember, I uploaded it right here and I'm just going to click and drag. There we go. There we go. So this is it. This is the background. We have basically laid it out right here. Okay. And that is for step two setting. Wait, let me find rainbow corn again. So guys, this is step two setting the background for our digital paper. Um, if you want to pause the video and complete the steps, this is the time to do it. Okay. And we'll be right back when you're ready. Okay, now welcome back and we are going to do step three, creating tabs, okay? So let's just try to make a, um, I usually like to duplicate a page just so that if there's anything that goes awry, I have like this particular page where I have everything that's there, okay? The other thing is click everything and click on lock because we're going to add different elements to it. You don't really want to change things. You don't really want to uh, move the spiral binder or move the different pages that we have created right here, right? So just lock it down if you don't want to touch them, okay? Now go to elements and go to shapes because this is where we're going to find the shapes right here. You can pick, um, you know, circle, even this, or the one that I chose is this one. I chose this particular shape. This is going to be my tab. Okay. And it's going to be right here. Just making it a little bit smaller. Now, maybe I'm going to shift. I'm going to move my um, planner a little bit lower so that I can have my tabs at the top and at the side. Okay. So there we have it right here. Just moving it slightly lower. So it gives me room at the top for my tab right here. And I'm going to change the color of this particular tab. And I can use the eyedropper function here to pick off the color from this particular digital paper. So that's a theme going on. Okay. So here, and I'm going to make a duplicate control D to duplicate. Let's just zoom in. Why? Because then the one at the back is going to be black. So it looks, once again, it looks more three-dimensional. I'm going to position it to the back here, this one, right like this, use arrow key to adjust and positioning it backwards so that it's behind the cover page. And then I can click to drag and group this. So now it becomes a group and I'm going to go back to elements and I'm going to search for home. Okay. So I'm going to have this little home icon. Why? Because this later on, we are going to hyperlink this home tab to our index page where people can then navigate around this uh, digital planner and just by going to home tab, go to the index page and then pick the dates or the different pages that they want to go to. Okay. Because there is a limit to how many tabs we can add to this digital planner layout. So having an index page is going to be very helpful. Okay. So that's it. We're going to create the tab and then control D to duplicate. And then we're going to have a few more tabs right here. Um, I'm going to add another six more tabs, one for week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, and a notes tab. Okay. So now that we already have one tab done, we can change the color. Once again, use the eye chopper function, pick a color, and then we're just going to positioning it backwards and control D to duplicate, zooming out, have this tab right here, control D to duplicate. And you can do it a few more times until we have week one to week five tabs and the sixth one right here. So now we've got six and we're going to move it backwards like this. And I'm going to insert a text box. You can choose any text that you want. And I'm just going to name it week one. Okay. So basically you name your tabs, you pick your colors and we will be done. Okay. So that's it. Just have to tap, name those tabs. And then this is step three guys. This is step three. We are creating the tabs. We are naming the tabs so that we have something right like this.
Okay, so go on, create your tasks, and come back for more. Welcome back to step four. And on step four, we are going to create an index page, okay, that looks like this. So how did I do this? Well, what I did was I, we have this, we have the home tab, we have all these tabs. And what I did was I just added another element here um, with the text box, monthly planner. And then I duplicated the page and added another text box so that there is a page where it says this planner belongs to. So now I'm gonna duplicate this page and just um, remove this. And I can use this to just add it as a little white background, change it to white. So then I can add more content on it with, with the words still very visible because I don't want the designs on of the unicorn to actually interfere with my planner page content. Now, in order to create an index page, we're going to use table. Element, go to elements and look for tables right here. Okay, we probably need like, look at this, we need four columns. So go to the ellipse menu and add a column. And here, let me just zoom in. What I did here is that I just have a text box here and this is a table. Okay, I'm just going to show you quickly how to do that. Meanwhile, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to have this text box, just insert text and put it right here as the header index. And now I don't want the grid. Okay, so but you can, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this white rectangle because at the background, I don't really need to touch it. But here, let's get rid of the grids. I want to get rid of the grid lines. Okay, click on one particular grid and then hold down the shift key and click some more. So now you see the entire table has the purple border around it and go to this border and click on white. So there's no more borders. Look at that. Okay, and then use the same method to select because right now we want to change the font size. Let's try size 13. I think this should be fine. And then we can start typing in. Like the first one that I had is month because we're going to have monthly planner. And then I'm going to do it downward. So month, week one, week two, tap, 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 week three, tap, tap, tap. You see that as I tap, a new row appeared. Week four, tap, 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 week five. Press the tab key on your keyboard to go to the next row, okay? So then after that, you will fill up the entire table right here. What I did was I have the monthly planner page each of these weeks because we're gonna have weekly planner pages. And number one to number 31, because this is going to be a monthly planner, right? But it's undated, but I need to have one daily planner page for every day of the month. And the, and the last one would be the notes. Okay, so fill up the table. You can change the grid color if you want. You can change the font size, of course. And then that would be step four, creating this index page. Okay, so at a glance, this is where we're going to hyperlink the home tab to. It comes to this index page. So after that, at the very end of our tutorial, this masterclass, we're going to teach you how to hyperlink each of these so that when you click on these, it goes to the right page in your digital planner, okay? So right here, call to action, step four, create your index page and come back for step five. Hey there guys, we are at step five and in this step, we're going to create the monthly planner. Now, you will be familiar with the table because we just used the table element to create this index page, right? So same thing, duplicate the index page, and then we're just gonna delete the table. Okay, relax, just delete the table because what we're gonna do is we are going to create um, our monthly calendar, okay? Our monthly planner, we, with the, table element okay right here so just rename it monthly planner and go back to the table and right now we're gonna have seven columns and six rows okay go to the ellipse menu add column keep adding until you have one two three four five six seven and what did i say six rows okay six rows why six rows because we need the top row top row to be the place where we actually say write the names of 
the days of the week and then to cater to five weeks in a month. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Now here we have the table selected. Use the corners to stretch it and resize it right like this. You can fill up the whole space and you can also use this position ellipse menu position to the center so now it's nicely centralized and you can also select your table and click on this one so right now it's transparent right you can actually click on white or even a colored background that is also up to you okay you can select the background of your table you can also select the color of the grids do you see that you can do all that okay so it's fully customizable it's up to you but for now we're going to stick with this white background black grid, grid lines and then right here the top row i am going to just type in the days of the week and then and there we go and this one i'm going to size it such that it sizes row to content because i don't need this particular row to be so wide right so size row to content and there we go and then i have my table like this if i still want to i can stretch it to resize it again okay so one thing to note do not resize your table with these short white lines because when you do that do you see that you're not resizing the table equally if you want to resize the entire table with you know proportionately you need to use the circles drag it at the white circles on the corners like this okay so that's one tip for you so this is it guys this is our monthly planner it's super simple isn't it so there we have it at step five we have created our monthly planner page where is rainbow corn Rainbow Corn says, now is the time to pause the video and we will come back. And the next time I'll see you, we are doing our weekly planner. Okay. Welcome back to step six, where we are going to create this weekly planner as what you see on the screen. Okay. It's a very simple weekly planner. We have this on the left hand side, a column with seven days of the week for you to do that. We've got a little table for to do list. We've got a blank space, which can be anything that you name it. You know, it could be notes. It could be, um, code of the week. It could be doodle of the weeks, anything. And here, a little box to write your date okay so how do we do that duplicate this monthly planner page and then of course we want to rename it and weekly or oh, i'm going to put it as week one planner because i'm going to have five weekly planners right and now i'm going to make it uh aligned to the left hand side and here i'm going to delete the table and I'm going to go back and use the table again to create my weekly planner. But right now, I only need one column and I need seven rows. Go, go to the ellipse menu, add row until I have seven. Click on this ellipse. And how many do we have now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got seven. Resize it. Stretch it out like this. Until here, right like this same thing i can select this table one thing to note if you click on it if you only have this purple grid lines appear around one box this means that you are only selecting this one box and not the entire table so in order to do that click and drag the entire table like this and then now i can change the color once again you can change it to any background color that you want and i want it to be white okay and then I'm going to type in the days of the week, Mon, to weather, fry, sat, sun. Okay, and then let's zoom out. And then I'm going to have my words aligned to the left right here. And I can even go to this spacing where I try to go for the top alignment or bottom alignment. Okay, so do you see that? Instead of being right in the middle of the box like this, I can click on this vertical alignment to choose where I want my words to be. Okay, so there we have it. So that's one side of the weekly one planner. And here I can even just make use of this table and duplicate it right like this. 
and then hold down my shift key to select multiple grids and delete six rows with the ellipse menu right here and resize it, zooming in, resizing this one so that I have this instead of Sunday right now, I'm going to change it to date. Okay, so I can actually have my weekly planner with this particular date right like this. Okay, so there we have it. So now, and then I want to add a to-do list and I want another space for the quote of the week. So what can I do? Same thing, I can still use this table. Control D to duplicate it. And then insert, add a column. And right now, because this is going to be a to-do list, resize it, to-do list. I need, um, I don't need this side to be so big. So one column is going to be much smaller than the other. And in fact, right now, holding down the shift keys to click and select this entire row with the words and hit delete button. And there we go. And you see that this is not, this is not evenly spaced, right? So just re, just use this to drag. Remember corners of the circle set a corner will help you resize your table evenly. Okay, so now maybe I'm just going to shift it down because I'm going to duplicate this text box and put it right here as to-do list, central alignment, shifting it right here, central alignment, try to find the red, the pink dotted lines to help me align it. And there we go. Okay, so I've got my to-do list right here. Now, this one, remember, I need a space for the quote of the week. Here, Control D to duplicate this text box, shift it down, shift it down right here, and change it to quote of the week. Okay, and then I'm gonna make use of this single rectangle, Control D to duplicate, and just resize it like this. Okay, we are almost done. Just need to delete this because I just want it to be an empty box. And guys, there we have it. Our weekly planner is up. And not to forget, we have five weekly planners, right? So we're just going to click on this duplicate page and change this to week two. Duplicate this page, change this to week three until we have our five times weekly planner, okay? And then remember the tabs that we made them, we are going to have them click on, we will have these tabs and be able to, uh, you know, click on these to these pages, okay? So yeah, so this is step, this is step six. Weekly planner done. Okay, we are almost there, more than halfway already. So go to your weekly planners and come back for the daily ones. Welcome back, you guys. This is step seven. We are going to create our daily planner page. So it will look like this. Okay, same thing as you can see, we are using table elements to create our daily planner page, just as what we have done for the monthly planner page, as well as the weekly planner page, okay? So right here, we have our week five planner page. Click on duplicate, and there we go. And then all we have to do is um, just rename this daily planner. And then, I'm going to delete this table because I don't need that anymore. Just bin it. And I'm going to have another table right here has, that has two columns, second table, and just a grid. Okay. So here, let me remove this, delete this table. And here, now I need this table, this particular time and activity table to have like 10 rows maybe, uh, so that, you know, people can write down their daily schedule, okay? So let me just zoom in. Let me resize this particular column and type in the words time and activity. Now it's too small. So just have to adjust the font size, right? Like this, right? 
And then what we're going to do is we are going to add more rows. Same thing, you can go to this particular ellipse menu to add row, or you can just press the tab key on your keyboard and keep pressing until you fill up enough rows that you like. Okay, if it's too much, click on, click on the ellipse menu and delete row like this. And let me just zoom out a little bit. And once again, I'm going to resize it and I'm going to have it a little bit off center. Okay, I'm going to have this time activity table slightly wider than the middle than half the page. Okay, so then we're going to have another small table right here to list down like a finance tracker, like a budget tracker, an item and expense, some water droplets here to track how many cups of water you drink a day, and a notes grid. Okay, so let's see. Once again, I can just use this table and duplicate this. You can press either Control D on your keyboard or Command D if you're using a Mac or press this duplicate icon. Okay and resize it right like this i don't need it so long holding down the shift keys to select these grids and then holding down clicking on this ellipse menu to delete the five rows and there we have it stretch it stretch it and this time around i'm going to have item expense as you can see i don't need the space for the top row to be so wide go to the ellipse menu and go to size row to content and therefore you see it automatically shrinks it down according to the size of the words okay so there we go one two three four five six is six items enough one two three four five six seven mm, up to you maybe i can just add another tab and have one more row like this okay now this one, I'm just going to resize it and have this. I don't really want this header anymore because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type the word notes here. That's it, notes for this particular grid. Okay, and then I'm going to find elements and search for um, water droplet. And there we go, something like this. And just doing this, Control D to duplicate. As you can see, it's getting slanted. It's not properly aligned, but not to worry. I'm just going to have eight, eight of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One more, eight. Okay, just put an eighth one here. Holding down the shift key and clicking on them so that I can select multiple items. Once again, holding down the shift key to click on these elements so that I can select multiple items and go to the position tool to align them horizontally, vertically, and tidy them up. And let's see, now they're properly aligned, okay? And then I can shrink it down and move it right here. There we go. If I want to, I can even group them. So then I can just resize it again as a group, okay? Meanwhile, so this is uh, my water tracker and then I'm I'm just going to resize my notes because I have more space right now. That's it, guys. Daily planner. This time around, I'm going to have it centralized. In the middle of the page, go to ellipse menu, position, center. You see that? Now the header is in the middle of the page. Um, but let's name it properly. I want to have 31 times of this daily planner page, right? One for each day of the month. Day one will be first of this day. And then just duplicate this and name it day two. So that's second. And duplicate again and rename it. And all the way until you have day 31. Okay, so where's my friend? Rainbow Corn says, we are at the end of step seven. Please go and do up your daily planner pages and we will come back to do our notes page and to rearrange the pages according to the sequence that we want. All right, I'll see you soon. Welcome back to step eight. We are almost there, guys. Thank you so much for being staying here with me. Um, now, we have 31 pages of daily planner. And then right now we're going to create a notes page, just duplicate this, and then um, just removing um, the elements on this page. I don't want a table anymore. Let's just remove that. And then what I do want is that I'm going to have, uh, just use this. 
save it, change it to notes, and then I'm going to duplicate this right here. Let's just zoom in. And I'm going to create lined notes pages. And how do I do that? You know how to create an underscore? Use the underscore tool. Okay, just use the underscore tool, hold it down, yawn, take a sip of water, and just hold down the underscore keys on your keyboard until you pretty much fill up the entire page. Okay, so you can do that. Um, you can even copy and paste it, whichever is easier, but I'm just going to hold it and talk to you and look at the lines go, which is pretty therapeutic until um, the entire page is filled with these underscores. Okay, we're almost, almost there before my pinky and my um, index finger cramps up. Okay, so we're almost there. There we go. We have our lined notes page. There we have it. Just shift it up. And if you don't want the lines to be so harsh, you can even just change the colors, like maybe to a gray, or you can also have it black and just reduce the transparency. Okay, it looks the new reduce transparency however you want it. Okay, so there we have it. This is the lined notes page. Okay, now the awesome thing about the digital planner is that you can have as many pages as you like. One thing to note so far, Canva only allows you to have 200 pages per project, okay? So that is one thing to keep in mind. But otherwise, technically speaking, for digital planners, you can actually have as many pages as you like. So we will be adding more notes pages because, um, but for now, we're just going to leave it as one because when we add the hyperlink to this notes tab, it's going to come to the first page of the notes section. Okay. But after that, we're going to add more pages after the hyperlink. I'm going to show you then. Okay. So now going to the grid view, the grid view icon is on the bottom right hand corner of the screen. When you click on it, you see all your um, pages in, you know, in, in sequence. Okay. So this is where you can actually rearrange. Oh, so if you like, you know, if you like, if you like to have like inspirational quotes, you know, and stuff like that, you can even add more pages in between to have like quotes and images and stickers and whatsoever. So that is entirely up to you. Okay. But you have to make sure that you are arranging your pages in the correct sequence because it's going to affect the hyperlinks. Okay. So just glance through, make sure you have all the weekly, you know, we're going to go in uh, index monthly, week one to week five, day one to day 31. And then finally the notes section. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do for my planner. I leave it up to you, but please make sure that the pages are arranged in the correct sequence before we add our hyperlinks. That is very, very important. Okay. So that was a quick one. Step eight is completed. Go do your notes page. Just do one for now. And unless you want to have like different uh, types of note pages, like lines or blank pages, or, you know, the ones with the dots. Yeah. So, but you know, if you're just creating lines, create one and come back so that we can go to step number nine. So, so, so guys, step number nine, we are going to name the pages. I know this seems like such a minute uh, issue, but it's really very important. Why? Because when we add hyperlinks to it, um, it really helps if the pages are named. Okay, you will see, you will see how it applies later. But now is a good time to add your, to name your pages. Okay, so how do you name them? Just click on this page and then you can name them index. Click on this and you can name them month. Don't get too fanciful and it doesn't have to be really long. What you want to do is so that at a glance, you know that page five is where week one is. Page six is where week two is because then it will help you with your hyperlinking. Okay. You don't have to name every single page like right here, page number one and page number two. I did not name them. And ultimately the notes page here, I'm just going to name notes for the first page where I have the notes page, right? But later when I duplicate the notes, I don't really have to name them. I don't have to name every single page, okay? It's like just an indication of what is on that, the content of that page, okay? So name your pages 
And that's it. That's it. Number nine. Step number nine is just about naming your pages. So add those names and come back for our last final step. So are you guys excited? Because this would be the most fun part because this is the, the, what do I call it? Um, the reason why this is a digital planner, because we're going to add hyperlinks, right? To those tabs. We've created those tabs. We're going to add hyperlinks to them. So let's start with the first one. So what do we do? What do we do? How do we add hyperlinks? You can add hyperlinks to images, shapes, and text. Okay. However, Remember that if you were to hyperlink these words, once words are hyperlinked, they become underlined automatically and the underline doesn't go away, which I don't really fancy, which is why you would see right here, my index, the words here are all underlined because, well, they are all hyperlinked. Okay, but for index page, I think it's fine because then the hyperlink kind of indicates that, sorry, the underline kind of indicates that the words are hyperlinked. So I'm just going to zoom in, present in full screen, and you will see that when I mouse over it, it becomes a little hand instead of an arrow. So that indicates to me that it's hyperlinked. So let me click on month and it goes to the monthly planner. I click on the home tab, it goes back to index. I click on 27, it goes to day 27 planner. I click on one of the tabs right here, week two. It goes to week two planner. I click on notes. It goes to the first notes page. Once again, home tab goes to index, goes to week five. Do, do you see what just happened? We can just toggle and navigate between, you know, within this planner, jumping from one page to another, just using these home tab index page, as well as the tabs on the side. Okay. So, so that is what we want to do. And but I prefer not to have my tabs underlined. Okay, so that is the workaround I'm gonna show you. So let's start with hyperlinking our index page first. So we have all of these words, right? So now we're gonna hyperlink each of these words. Now the word month is going to go to the monthly planner page. So go to more, click on hyperlink, and then now, do you see that now you have these pages in document? Now, basically, when you hyperlink, you can put in a URL and it goes to any external website, okay? But right now, we are trying to hyperlink within this document. So this is why having these names are so important. Imagine you have like more than 100 pages. It's going to be really difficult to scroll through and find the particular page, especially when the thumbnails are so small. Once again, this is why you have to name these pages so that it's easier. If you don't want to scroll through, you can just type the name. Type the name and you find it, you click it, it gets hyperlinked. Okay. Once again, I'm going to show it to you right here. Click on this hyperlink icon and I can key in week one because that is what I named for my week one page and that's page five and I click on it, it becomes underlined. It means it's hyperlinked. Now it's always good to kind of check if your hyperlinks are done correctly. Don't do it um, after you have completed everything. Do it, you know, every now and then just to make sure that things are going well. I wouldn't recommend checking after every single hyperlink. That is way too much trouble. But you know, for a start, Let's just check to make sure that we have done the month and the week correctly. Okay. So click on the month. It goes to the monthly planner page. Now I do not yet have my index page hyperlinked, but that at least that works, right? I clicked on the word month is hyperlinked to the right one and so on and so forth. So then you will have to basically just highlight each word and go to this ellipse menu, click on this hyperlink icon, and then at the pages. So now you see that it really helps when you name your pages because it's so much easier to find the right page to hyperlink to. So do that for the entire, um, you know, the entirety of your index page so that all these pages are now hyperlinked and you can navigate. Okay. Now we have done the index page. We want to hyperlink our tabs. Okay. But unlike the index page where we hyperlinked these specific words, like I said, I don't want my words to be hyperlinked. 
The other thing is, look at that, this one, the home button, you can also hyperlink the shape. When I click on this home button, there is a hyperlink option available here. However, I want to make sure that when somebody uses the hyperlink tabs, you know, when they press the fingers on the tabs, that they can, that the tabs will be responsive, no matter which part of the tab they press on. Do you follow what I mean? Let me just zoom in all the way. Do you see this purple tab with the home button? If I were to just hyperlink the home icon, when somebody presses, the purple part of the tab is not going to work because the hyperlink is only on the home button. This is why what I prefer doing, go into element and just go into a reg regular square shape, right this. Okay, I'm just going to drag it all the way up here and I'm going to resize it like this, that it covers, it fully overlaps my home tab. Go to color, make it transparent. And now this transparent shape is on top of my home icon, is on top of my purple tab. And then this is what I'm going to hyperlink. I'm going to add, go to ellipse menu, create this link and it goes to my index page. Okay, so once again, test it out. Let's go to present on full screen. So when you mouse over it, if there is a hyperlink active, you will see a hand instead of an arrow. Okay, so you click on it and it works. Okay, it goes to the index page. So this is how you test your hyperlinks as you work through them. Okay, so now basically, let me just repeat that. I already have this transparent shape right here, right? Remember, this is transparent. Ctrl D to duplicate the shape and just move it all the way right here. Now it's going to be above this turquoise tab. And then I'm going to go to the ellipse menu and click on link. And now this one goes to my monthly planner page. I can type in what I named it. And there we go and click done. Once again, Ctrl D to duplicate this transparent magical, <laughs> magical transparent shape, ellipse menu, link, and go, it goes to my week one page. Okay, and that's it. So then you repeat the process and you hyperlink all your tabs with this transparent shape so that there is no underlined words so that no matter where people click on that tab, not just the word itself, as long as they click on any part, any part of this pink tab, any part of this purple tab, they will be brought to the correct page. Okay, that is how you do that. Okay, so then we would have added the hyperlinks to all the tabs on this page. Now then, how do you duplicate these hyperlinks on every single page, right? Because what you're going to do now is that you would only have hyperlinked the tabs on page one, but we need the hyperlinks to appear on every single page. So now this comes the slightly tedious, but actually super simple thing to do. Okay. So what you want to do is listen carefully, click on the transparent shape that is on top of each of these tabs. Okay, so right now, this one, you see this, it means transparent, no color, it means I'm clicking the transparent hyperlinked shape on top of the home tab, hold down my shift key and clicking on all of these tabs as well, because I'm actually selecting the transparent shapes that have been hyperlinked. Okay, so now I've got these hyperlinks and I'm going to go to the ellipse menu and group it. Okay, I what I've done is I've essentially grouped the transparent shapes that carry the correct hyperlinks to the different sections of this digital planner. Okay, group them together, control C, and then I go to page two, and then I'm just going to press control V. There we go, we paste it right here, right? and control page three, control V to paste the hyperlink tabs, page four, control V 
to paste the hyperlinked text, okay? So this is rinse and repeat. Okay, guys, rinse and repeat. Just going to every single page and pressing Control V to paste the hyperlinked text. Okay, now I've done onto page six. Going to present full screen again just to check if I'm doing everything correct. So each of these have been hyperlinked. And then, do you see when I mouse over them? Each of these tabs have hyperlinks. Okay, so that is it. You need to rinse and repeat by just copying and pasting or in actually it's just pasting because you have already copied it once. After that, it's just a matter of pasting and pasting these group, this group of invisible shape with hyperlinks onto each page, okay? Until you finish the entire digital planner. And once that is done, remember, we will still have your note section. Now, this is where you can, after you have pasted all the invisible shapes carrying the hyperlinks for all 41 pages, now feel free to add as many notes pages as you want. Okay, why? Because anything that is added behind the notes pages are not, is not going to affect the sequence of your page right here in front, right? Because you have to be very, very clear that the hyperlinks work because of the page numbers. So the minute you switch the page numbers around, the hyperlinks are going to get messed up. But because we have basically only hyperlinked, the notes tab goes to the first notes page. Anything that I add beyond that doesn't matter. Okay, so now I've got this notes page. I've got the invisible hyperlinks there. All I need to do is just click duplicate and duplicate and duplicate because then I'm just duplicating my notes page with the correct hyperlinked, hyperlinked tabs. Okay, so right here, you can press this icon to duplicate. You can just press Command D or Control, Control C, Control V, or just click on this one. Or even faster, hold down the Shift key to select multiple pages and click duplicate. And you can go trigger happy and just click du duplicating as many <laughs> notes, pages as you like. Okay? So yeah, so now you see with just a few more clicks, I've got lots more notes pages. Okay? Now, that's it. That is it. We have completed our entire undated monthly digital planner. Okay, once again, please make sure you test your planner before exporting it. Okay, so how do you test? Go to present full screen. Just click on them. Click on any of the hyperlinks. Make sure that things are going well. Week one, week two, week three, notes, home tab index page, day 31, and just test those hyperlinks, okay? Which is also why, like I've mentioned earlier, if you check your hyperlinks, you know, every few steps along the way, it will be much easier to spot if there is actually a mistake, okay? But once you get a hang of it, you should be fine. It's just about being, it's not difficult, it's just a little tedious, and you just want to be very careful when you're doing all these hyperlinks, okay? Which is also why the big tips that you need to keep in mind are, naming the pages, arranging the pages in the correct sequence before you start hyperlinking them, okay? So, final, final, finally, we are going to click on share, we are going to click on download, and we are going to select PDF standard, and do not, do not flatten PDF. Let me read, let me say that again. Do not flatten PDF, big no, okay? Leave this unchecked because the minute you flatten PDF, your final PDF that is being exported out will not have any hyperlinks at all, okay? Then you would have wasted all of your efforts. So please, when exporting a digital planner with hyperlinks using Canva, please make sure that you are not flattening the PDF, okay? So then, there we go. Just hit download and twiddle your thumbs and wait a little while. And for your 
amazing, beautiful, fun, and practical digital planner to get ready. And then that will be the file that you upload it to sell and for your customers to use. Okay, so there we have it. We've got this and there we go. Lovely, lovely that the tabs are working. It's, it's such a... There's such an immense sense of satisfaction because, you know, all this effort, all this step-by-step -step stuff, we have got it all done. And this digital planner is working. Okay, so... That's it, guys. That's it. Now, I really, really hope that you have enjoyed this masterclass. It is not the shortest of the presentations, but I do hope that you have benefited so much from it. Now, before you leave, please, please fish out your mobile phone and you can actually just use the camera function to scan this QR code and you will be brought to my landing page or I believe Kat would have included like a hyperlink or a button for you to actually get my freebie. My freebie for you is this unicorn undated monthly digital planner fully editable in Canva templates, okay? So if you have found any part of this presentation to be confusing, or you would rather just not start from scratch and just use a template, there you go, okay? Those are my templates coming to you for free. Um, just sign up for it. You will get a link to the Canva templates and then you can customize it and use it. Um, you can use it and sell the ultimate product, your PDF file as a personal use digital planner. You can use it for yourself. You can give it away as lead magnet. The only thing you cannot do is you cannot share it or sell it as an editable Canva template. Got it? You can only export the final product as a PDF and sell it to your customers for their personal use, okay? So it's done for you. I hope that you have enjoyed this presentation. Now, if you do have any more questions or I would love to hear any feedback from you and I would also love to continue connecting with you even after this summit, please reach me at faith at faithsbizacademy.com and join my private Facebook community, facebook.com slash groups slash creating printables with faith. And I would love to connect with you and help you and support you in the long term. Okay, because, well, my, my mission is to help aspiring entrepreneurs build sustainable online businesses. Okay, and I love creating and designing printables. So let's connect. Okay, so that's all. That's all. Where are my where are my corns, the unicorns? So that's all for now, guys. It's been so fun. I hope you guys have also enjoyed yourself. Um, yeah, and we will see you around. Bye.